you, Lynn, for organizing the panel and for the opportunity to present our work on uh, mechanisms of touch sensation in mammals. Now, the sense of touch is often overlooked, but it's really fundamental to our survival. Touch is essential for social bonding, for successful child rearing and proper cognitive development, for obtaining nutrients, and for avoiding harm's way. Touch is the first sense to develop in the embryo and the last to fade as we age. Touch has fascinated philosophers and scientists for more than two millennia. In Plato's time, touch was declared to be the lowest sense. The eye is the window to the soul, but touch serves our carnal appetites. And this school of thought has dominated Western philosophy and art since that time. You can appreciate this in the 17th century allegorical painting entitled Touch, whose foreground is um, populated by instruments of war, by the scantily clad woman kissing Cupid, and here by um, surgical instruments, which are meant to depict the sense of pain. But Aristotle took a different view, linking touch to human intelligence. He said, with respect to the other senses, man is far inferior to the other animals. But with respect to the sense of touch, he excels by far in discrimination over the other animals. This is why man is the most intelligent of animals. Now, I might quibble a bit here and say this is why humans are among the most intelligent of animals. Nonetheless, um, Aristotle, when he referred to touch di discrimination, meant our ability to distinguish tactile features of objects in our world, such as their shapes, their, ob their um, edges, and their textures. And this ability, this discriminative touch ability, does enable uniquely human feats. The touch receptors that innervate our skin constantly send this information about the tactile features of our environment to the central nervous system, where it's processed to guide exquisitely sensitive fine motor skills. Touch inputs are especially important for learning new fine motor skills, like playing an instrument, or for babies or for children, like manipulating things like spoons as they're feeding themselves or instruments as they learn to write. Playing music, for example, the example I'm showing here, requires the pianist to rapidly feel the key's edges so, they, uh, so he or she knows whether or not his fingers are striking the right note. The emotional content of the music is imparted in part by how softly or how uh, vigorously he or she hits the keys. So the way that he, in this case he, gauges that is by the amount of pressure that the key exerts back against the fingertips. So today what I'm going to do over the next 15 minutes or so is introduce our efforts to understand how the nervous system works in concert with the skin, with cells in the skin, to uh, trigger this captivating sense of touch. So I need to start by telling you a little bit about the somatosensory system itself. So the neurons that allow us to, uh, that initiate the sense of touch and related neurons that trigger the senses of pain and itch have cell bodies that lie in little um, pockets that run along the vertebral column. They're found in little balls of neurons called sensory ganglia. And each neuron in this sensory ganglion has a, a, a branching axon, which we call an afferent, which projects to the periphery where the, these neurons encode um, physical, chemical, or thermal stimuli uh, into neuronal impulses, which then travel along this cable, this afferent, to the central nervous system, either the brain or the spinal cord, so that these, this information from the periphery can be uh, processed and um, interpreted as a sensory percept, as a perception. Now, some of these neurons, those we call nociceptors, respond to noxious or tissue damaging stimuli. And as I said, these could be thermal, like uh, freezing cold temperatures or burning hot temperatures. Um, or they could be chemicals that are damaging to our bodies. And these are called nociceptors and thermoreceptors. 
Another class of these neurons are called mechanoreceptors. And these neurons actually respond to physical pushing on the body um, uh, or mechanical stimuli. And they initiate sensations of touch. That's what we're going to talk about today or they provide awareness of your limbs in space, and we call those neurons proprioceptors. So these sensory neurons that innervate skin, the touch receptors, um, are remarkable for many reasons, but two that I want to focus on today. And that is that they are both anatomically, so architecturally, as well as functionally specialized to pick out individual qualities of a complex touch stimulus and encode them as specific patterns of neural activity um, that the brain can interpret. So here is a, a three-dimensional reconstruction of touch receptors that innervate skin. In this case, it's the skin of a mouse, and it's the hairy skin. And you can tell it's the hairy skin because these big tree trunk-like structures are autofluorescent hair follicles. These little wiggly lines that are wrapping around these, these tree trunks are the sensory neurons. And what I want to point out here is that they have a remarkable diversity in their uh, structure. So some of these neurons make these elaborate ring-like structures around hair follicles. Others form these little picket fence-like structures called lanceolate endings. And these kinds of neurons respond to wiggle of hairs or to vibration. Still others project up through the deep layers of skin to innervate the most superficial layers, um, and, and those are found here. Now today I'm going to present snippets of two recent stories that I'm excited about that gives uh, a sense of how we're approaching the periphery and, um, and how we uh, in, uh, interrogate the peripheral nervous system to understand the language of touch. The first thing that I'll talk about is um, our efforts to understand the cellular basis of gentle touch. And then second, if I don't run out of time, I'll tell you um, a more translational story, which, is, which aims to, under, to harness the body's peripheral neurons to treat disease. OK, so to address the first question, which is really the core of our basic neuroscience uh, program, we focused much of our efforts on a very special vertebrate touch receptor called the Merkel cell neurite complex. These complexes are um, exquisitely sensitive touch receptors that cluster in areas of the skin that are specialized for high tactile acuity. So we and other mammals have hundreds of Merkel cell neurite complexes uh, in our, our uh, fingertips. They're also very abundant in our lips, which are uh, two of our most um, uh, sensitive body sites. Mice and other mammals have hundreds of Merkel cell neurite complexes around their whisker follicles, and that makes sense because the whisker is the rodent's organelle or organ of high tactile discrimination. And in the hairy skin that covers the m most of our body, Merkel cell neurite complexes are found in these little special structures called touch domes, and these are the areas of skin that we routinely study and that I'll be talking about today. Now, these complexes are thought to mediate fine tactile discrimination, which we as humans rely on for essential daily activities, from feeding ourselves with utensils to typing an email. We can record the responses of the sensory neurons that innervate Merkel cells by using um, uh, electrophysiological recordings, in this case, with a, a semi-intact preparation um, that includes the, the skin of the hind limb of the rodent and the saphenous nerve, which is a, a nerve that's made up of about 2,000 sensory neurons that innervates the um, medial aspect of the hind limb skin. We can literally tease apart this bundle of nerves into small bundles of maybe 10 neurons and then place those neurons on silver wire electrodes and record the neuronal impulses when the skin is touched. Uh, in this case, we can use a little computer-controlled indenter to, to press on the skin and record the response of a single neuron that innervates that area of the skin. So what I'm showing you here is a, a depiction of the skin's reactive force. So when we press on the skin for five seconds, this is uh, the reactive force of the skin back on our probe. And then this, um, 
uh, trace represents the pattern of neural impulses from a single neuron innervating this little aspect of skin. We have the sound on. Okay. So when we do this uh, this type of experiment, we can see that that the um, neuron that innervates these Merkel cells, these skin cells in the skin, uh, produce a characteristic firing pattern or characteristic pattern of neuronal activity that is called the slowly adapting type 1 response. And I'm going to call that an SA1 response. Now there are a few features of the SA1 response that you have to appreciate to understand the data that I'm going to show you today. And the first is that it's biphasic. So during a, a sustained five second touch, the neuron fires first a very high frequency burst of impulses when the skin is actually moving. We call that the dynamic phase. And that dynamic phase when the skin is moving encodes object features during active touch. Now that makes sense because the way you feel a texture or, or palpate a shape is by moving your, your fingertips across the surface. So it's that, that active or moving touch that encodes um, object features. Now when the skin is held at a constant position, the firing drops off, but it continues to fire. The single neuron will keep firing as long as the skin is compressed for up to 30 minutes. Now that sustained response then encodes pressure. And right now, as you are sitting quietly in your chair, touch receptors in your skin are sending this information at all times to, the, to, your, to your brain. Um, and so your question, you might be thinking, why am I not feeling this? But the fact is you are feeling it, because as soon as I said that, could you guys feel your clothes? Did you become aware of the chair underneath your legs? That's right, so the, the information is always being sent to your nervous system and your attentional mechanisms in your brain are allowing you to ignore the things that are not important to you right now, including touch receptors. Okay, now during the sustain phase, this neuron fires in a regular pattern of impulses. And we don't know why or how that irregularity is important, but we can use this as a, a, a signature of these neurons to distinguish these Merkel afferents from other afferents in the skin. And the way we do this is we actually split the signal, we send half of it to the computer, but we also play it through a speaker. So as we're doing the recording, we can hear the pattern of activity of the neurons. And these SA1 afferents sound like this. like a popcorn popper. Did you guys hear it? It sounded very regular. So the other type of slowly adapting uh, afferent, which neurophysiologists named slowly adapting type two afferents, very imaginatively, sound like this. Could you hear the difference? Okay. So the final thing I need to tell you is these SA1 type responses are only found in skin areas that contain Merkel cells. And we know that because the, in the mouse, the epidermis, the outer layer of skin, is very thin and transparent. So we can actually use transgenic mice that express green fluorescent protein, a fluorescent protein selectively in Merkel cells. And we can visualize those Merkel cells on the skin. We can then press on the skin over the Merkel cells, and we get this firing pattern. And if we press on the skin right next to the Merkel cells, we get no neural responses at all. So that brings up an obvious question, which is what are these little skin cells doing in touch sensation? So the hypothesis that has been in the, in the um, literature for many decades, in fact, since Merkel first described these cells in 1875, is that these are in fact sensory receptor cells. So that when you push on the skin, these neurons somehow convert the push of the, of, uh, the force of the push into an electrical signal that then causes the release of a neurotransmitter to activate the sensory neuron, which then causes these neural impulses that I just, um, that I just showed you and that you just heard. Now, to address this hypothesis, this long-standing hypothesis, my group has addressed three conceptually simple questions. 
first, are Merkel cells touch sensitive? So if these are in fact sensory receptor cells, like a neuron, then they must be able to convert a push on the cell into an electrical signal. Second, are they sufficient to drive spike firing or neuronal impulses in these sensory afferents? And third, are they necessary for touch stimulated firing in these afferents? So to address the first question, we uh, did, uh, as I said, a conceptually simple experiment, and that is simply to push on the Merkel cell directly in the absence of the neuron and ask, is that sufficient to create an electrical signal? And the answer is yes. And I'm going to show you this, uh, the, the data in a format that's a visual format. So here's an ex experiment where Ben Hoffman, who's an MD-PhD student in the lab, um, isolated the epidermis, the outermost skin layer, and here in magenta you can see the position of four Merkel cells, and he's using a glass micropipette, so a tiny little probe whose tip diameter is about one micrometer, and he's going to push on this cell. We've now loaded these cells with a, a, a dye that um, changes its fluorescent property or its light emitting property when the cell becomes active. So when Ben pushes on the cell, in this case giving a push of only a couple of micrometers, you can see that the Merkel cell uh, immediately lights up when it, when it is pushed, and hopefully you'll see that again, and then when the push stops, the activity goes back down to zero. So this shows that in the absence of any neurons, these skin cells are capable of converting a push into uh, an electrical impulse. Now to address the second question, is activating this skin cell sufficient to activate the neurons? We have to um, study the neurons and the Merkel cells in the context of the intact skin where their connections are maintained. So to do that, we can't just isolate the skin from the nervous system. We have to study it as a whole. Um, and that brings up a problem. And that is, if we now try to push on the Merkel cell, which is shown here in blue, we will also push on the neuron, which is shown here in red. So there's no way to deliver a force selectively to the Merkel cell without also activating the neuron. So we turn to a different technology, which is optogenetics. So we made a, a transgenic mouse that expresses a light-gated protein in Merkel cells so that we can then shine blue laser light on the Merkel cells and in the complete absence of touch ask whether activating the Merkel cell is sufficient to cause the neuron to fire. And this is what that light um, gated protein looks like in Merkel cells. You can see it, it um, is expressed in the Merkel cells but not in the sensory neuron which is here in uh, cyan. Okay. So I told you that the, that the uh, mouse's skin is transparent, and so that means we can just shine blue light in the intact skin, record from those nerves like I just showed you, and ask whether lighting up the skin causes the, neuro, uh, the nervous system to respond. So what you can see is as soon as the light turns on, we get that nice irregular impulse of neuronal um, impulses from the uh, sensory neurons that innervate the skin. And we know this is a touch receptor because we can then push on the skin and see that the pattern of activity of the light activated neuron is the same as we know for these SA1 responses. So these data show us that um, the Merkel cell is capable of sending information to the nervous system in the absence of touch. Now the final question that I, uh, that I um, posed is, are Merkel cells necessary for touch receptor firing? So this shows that, that the skin cells can activate the neurons, but are they required to activate the neurons when the skin is touched? So to answer this question, we made another transgenic mouse, in this case one that expresses uh, another light activated protein, but one that turns the cell off um, when light shines on it. So when green light sh shines on the skin, it turns the activity of the Merkel cell off. And so for this experiment, what we did is give a three minute, a very long press 
to the skin and remember I told you these neurons can keep firing for up to 30 minutes so we press for three minutes and then we pulse green light on to shut the Merkel cells off. Um, 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off. And what you see is when we turn on the green light to shut down the Merkel cells activity, the neuron reduces or even completely stops firing. So these data tell us that, the neur that Merkel cells are not only sufficient to activate the nervous system, but they're necessary for touch to activate the nervous system. Now I'm uh, getting near the end of my, my time, so I'll um, move a little bit more quickly and just say that we want to understand this. So these data show us that cells in the skin are communicating with the nervous system, but they don't tell us how it's happening. And that's the question that we're addressing now. So, th so the way that we've done this, or the hypothesis that we've posed, is that Merkel cells although they're derived from the skin, are communicating with the nervous system through conventional synaptic transmission. So using the um, machinery that neurons use to talk to each other, we posit that the skin in the periphery is, is talking to the nervous system. So to test this hypothesis, um, we made a mouse that expresses a neurotoxin selectively in skin, and it's a neurotoxin that is capable of eliminating neurotransmitter release at synapses. And when we, when we record from afferents, from, from sensory neurons in these mice, we see that in response to a sustained touch, whereas a normal neuron would continue to fire as long as the skin is touched, when we silence the synaptic machinery, these neurons are now no longer capable of continuing to respond. So they still encode dynamic touch, but they completely fail to respond to sustained pressure. And the thing that's nice about these results is that they um, phenocopy, or they mimic the response of mice that completely lack the skin cells. So we can either completely remove Merkel cells or simply silence neurotransmitter release. And in either case, um, the, the sensory neurons fail to encode pressure. Um, they also have a reduced rate of information transfer to, um, to dynamic touch. So our conclusion then is that Merkel cells have co-opted classic neuronal machinery to convey sensory information to the nervous system. So in the interest of time, I'm going to simply acknowledge the folks who have done the experiments that I've shown you today. Um, this is the lab uh, as of a uh, couple of months ago. Uh, and the data that I showed you today um, were gathered by the scientists shown here in italics. And I'll thank you for your attention.